This is Pastor Troy. I hope you're doing well. We are wrapping up season two, but you know what that means? The best of season two. Here it comes. It's coming right at you in just a minute, but don't worry. We're in the studio. We're getting ready. We're getting things lined up, and very soon we'll be unveiling season three of On the Dock. In the meantime, you can go back, watch season one. Check it out. It is fantastic. It's not outdated. Go catch it. And now we're in season two, and get ready for this best of season two episode. And you're on the dock with Pastor Troy here. We're glad you joined us on another great episode. Come find us on the dock.org every Tuesday and Thursday. We're dropping new ones out for you. We got a great sub series going right here. We'll tell you more about it in a minute, but you know, at on the dock, we're about having conversations to propel your faith out of the shallows into the deep. We just between episodes here, we just have been having a great uh, deep conversation here at the table. Maybe we'll get it into the episode. Maybe we won't, but, but it's just nice to sit here with people that really love the Lord and just kind of hear what's going on and, and just talk a little bit about how we see worship growing. And we're going to do that with you today. So sit back and enjoy this broadcast. We're at YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google play, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and Sermonette. We would love to go to YouTube and hit subscribe and hit like and notify and share it with everybody. We're trying to grow that section. Also, same thing on Spotify and iTunes are our featured platforms along with the other five there to the right. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and Getter now. So we have social media presence there. You can find all kinds of information about that. If you've got a question about our guests or anything about the show or something, just reach out to us anytime. We would love to hear from you. It's so important to hear from you. We would love to. Also, you can hit subscribe, hit like, and notify. When you hit those things, share this with other people. Be a contagion for On The Dock for us. Help us out. And we'd love to have you as one of our partners. Go to Patreon and become a partner of On The Dock. You can go to download the app, my, uh, Patreon. Go to our site at On The Dock. And there's four levels of partnership, three levels of sponsorship. Check those out. We'd love to have you as a featured sponsor or partner on this program. You, we've got great levels, great tiers. One of them even allows us to do a show about you and your business and what you're doing and do it from a Christian perspective. We'd love to talk to you about being a partner or sponsor at On The Dock. You can go to onthedock.org to find out about all these platforms and information, and you can email us if you're just confused or you just want to ask a question, like uh, how do I find Hannah's incredible song, Keep Me? Uh, you can go to info at onthedock.org. We'll send that to you. Donna is great at answering those things, and we're glad to have you here. So I got around the table again, my regular cohorts in crime for this Worship Leader Series. I've got Mother Beth here at the table. Mother Beth, you got to talk more this time. Before you talk, you got to pull the microphone closer to your mouth. She said last time I didn't have anything to say. I mean, I want you to say something. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi, honey. Oh man, we had. I mean, we had coffee tea gate between episodes. I mean, I mean, it just. I mean, I'm as bad. She she hung me out, and then she <laughs> she she did. And she's she's hot right now. Look at her. See how hot she's a hot mama. Hot I'm not hot. She's hot. We, we're today, I turn the air down for everyone. I know, I know. We, we, you get hot too. At home, we run the house at a balmy 65 year round. You know, uh, sometimes we perk up to about 68, you know, sometime, but mostly 65, 68 here in our house. Very cold. Always wear a sweater. I, I dress in flannel and hoodies throughout the year. Isn't that, isn't that true? It's pretty, pretty true, Lucas. And yeah, yeah, we're used to it. But we're all, but we've all been Lucas sleeping. Lucas has his own thermostat. Yeah, but we've slept cold so long. We're both, we're all, we don't gripe or anything because we're scared of you. But we're over here today. We're in the studio, but we're sharing this space with another Bible study that's going on down the hall. And they're a bunch of older women that have already gone through a certain stage in life. So they're they're now cold all the time. And Beth is at that stage of life where she's hot all the time. And let me just tell you, Beth has control of the thermostat. And the women have a heater in their room and it's the middle of the summer. But they do that because they're trying to warm up. So Beth cut the difference between episodes. She gracefully moved the thermostat from 68. What did you move it up to? 69. <laughs> I thought you were going to go to 70. They were, they were beckoned for stuff. Dude, she gave him one degree. I mean, All right. Praise. She, she met him in the middle. Hey, you know what? When you get one degree from Mother Beth, you should just bow your head and sing the doxology. Praise blessings. God from whom all blessings flow. Because mm. I, she would never, Lucas, she wouldn't raise a degree for me in a year. Well, not for you. 
For you, yeah, for you she would. Yeah, she would for you. Lucas and I, we, we live over at the community house. So, uh, yes. And ben, Ben's at the table here. Ben, how you doing, brother? Just swell. Doing swell? You doing great? Just swell. Man, fantastic. And we got Lucas over here. He's not on microphone, but he is on camera. He's so good looking, but he's terrible sounding, so he took his microphone away. Hmm. Now, we're working on buying a microphone. If you would become a sponsor partner of On The Dot, go to my Patreon site and, and be a sponsorship. We would be able to afford the new mixer to add two more microphones. So help us do that. Become a partner sponsor, and the show will get bigger and better because you'll be able to actually hear from Lucas and not just see Lucas because Lucas is very wise. And we're here again. We're in our Worship Leader Southern Illinois series, a season two super series. And we're in episode number two, but it's part 25 with Hannah Heron. She's a worship leader at Victory Christian Fellowship in Murfreesboro. And we had her in the first episode, just kind of shared a little bit about her life and what's going on. Now, uh, Hannah, got your great picture up there. Uh, tell us again, you're, 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 you're not married. You're single, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <coughs> All right. Good. Are, are you are you like you got a prospect or are you are you, can people write in and try to become your Facebook friends just to get to know you? I don't know. I mean, don't be creepy about it, but yeah. Don't, hey, don't <laughs> be there you go. Yeah, don't be no creepy. Creepers. No creepers. No, no creepers. creepers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, write that down. I, you know, I've never thought about that. Women having social media presence can get some creepy dudes. You uh, know? Not it's, just women. Oh. Well, I've had a couple of creepers, but Mother Beth cuts them. Mm -hmm. She goes to their house and cuts them in the middle of the night. So, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, no, you get some creepy people out there. They just stalk yeah, you and really do, do stuff yeah. about you. They can, yeah. they can get obsessed by you. People and are weird. Okay. People are weird. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. If you're one of those people and beautiful. Yeah. 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 <laughs> people are beautiful. Don't, we have social media presence, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram. You do creepy stuff. We'll, we'll cut you out. We don't do that on, on the dock. We're not into that stuff here, but Hannah, so you're, you're single, you're, you're over in Murfreesboro, you live in Marion and you mm -hmm. drive 400,000 miles to go over there Pretty and much. lead worship. And you're at victory Christian fellowship, uh, pastor Frank and Bonnie Voorhees. And they're on Sunday at 1030, Wednesday at seven o'clock. Go check them out. Facebook uh, page is Victory Christian Fellowship. Great church. Uh, great looking sign. You had to go back in episode one and hear about that <laughs> sign. Love the sign. has been refaced. Great sign. We used to be over here at Community Faith Church. We did big three-way trade to get that and some other goods. Years back, I was involved in that trade and it was a, it was a, it was a good deal. It was a good deal. All right. We're, so we're, we're back here and we're in episode two of this uh, series and we want to get a little deeper into kind of more worship philosophy and some of this may apply or not apply and it's from a church that's kind of a pretty much a, a worship platform that's pretty static you know like ben's got three different people or three four different people combinations that lead worship and stuff here um <coughs> we did find out in watching a video between of your dad playing saxophone that you play drums too <laughs> you play drums bass guitar acoustic guitar mm -hmm. ukulele and what else uh electric guitar a little bit electric guitar, and piano <laughs> and piano did you just pick all this up or do your parents lock you in a yeah. room and make you do this? So I took guitar lessons when I was about eight till I was about 14. Um, when I was 11, I told them I wanted to learn how to play pianos. So they bought me a keyboard for Christmas. Um, and I think it was easier to learn that since I already knew guitar, I just kind of tried to figure out like where all the notes were and stuff. Mm -hmm. I used Taylor Swift songs to figure out chords. So <laughs> who would know Taylor Swift would be such an <laughs> asset to the kingdom of God? T Swizzy. I know. I mean, I mean, that's amazing. Most kids at your age would have been asking for like, uh, I don't know what what would, what would we had asked for like uh, roller skating Barbie, you know, or you know something else like Matchbox sets or you you got a keyboard and, and guitars and. I mean, and, and lessons. I mean, I took guitar <laughs> lessons. My parents put me in guitar lessons when I was kid, classical guitar lessons. I lasted like three or four weeks. The woman <laughs> threw me out. And oh, made, I'm sure. Uh, she kicked me out. She was across <laughs> the street and one of our neighbors down the road. And she loved me always. I remember when she passed. And uh, we were close, but she said I was unteachable. Yeah. She said I couldn't. I was a little bit high energy. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit high energy. She, I couldn't hold still. She'd so, put you on drums. She, yeah. They should have, but that she didn't teach that. It. She took yes. classic guitar and classic piano, yeah. and so she threw me out. I failed. So let's talk about the concept of leading and, and leading and creating worship experience. What goes into the process at Victory Christian Fellowship when you're when you're there uh, and you're going to lead a song or you're going to get ready for a set? What goes into the development and planning for that service? What, what, what's it look like for you guys? Yeah, so you know we all get there on Sunday morning, um, usually around nine or so, and uh, kind of just. Uh, work together to figure out what we think the set list should be um, and then we rehearse before service and then just kind of go for it but we've 
over the last couple of years, we've uh, really been exploring the idea that we don't have to have a certain formula. Because I think, you know, a lot of times over the years we've done like, you know, fast, fast, mid, slow, slow. But there's even been a couple of times here recently where we were like, I think we're just supposed to just do slow, just, you know, worship songs today, like mm -hmm. just dive right in. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of been the approach lately is, okay, are we doing these songs? So do you think there's a certain formula or we think this is what the people want to hear? Or are we doing this because we think this is what God wants us to sing today? So that's we've just good. kind of been exploring do that. Do you work um, at all with your pastor? Is your pastor involved in any of that? Does he give you some themes or? Uh, not, you, not, normally. not normally. What usually happens is, this actually happened this past Sunday, um, we did a lot of songs that just had, we actually did um, I Speak Jesus and we did that one um, just talks about, you know, Jesus delivering us and setting us free. And the message that day was about Jesus delivering us and setting us free. So a lot of times it's accidental, but the music and I found that with the that message. can be as yeah. effective as anything. There's a lot of times yeah. I've come in here and done stuff like that. And that there's other times that we, we highly connive a little bit. Well, at least I'll yeah. tell these guys where I'm going right. and then see what they come up with. And there's other days where they have no clue what I'm going to do yeah. because I changed it and, and I find out the song. It, it's like the Holy Spirit can work lots of ways. Yes. It can work. Some people are highly systematized. Some people are kind of a blend. I think we're probably a blend of that. We strategize on some stuff, but, mm -hmm. but a lot of that. Now, I guess I guess the way Ben and them do it here is you come in and you guys get together. We actually just use a wheel of fortune and we throw an arrow at, a dart at it and go, which song will it be? Nice. Yeah. Is that what you do? No. Uh, we use throwing axes. Throwing axes. I like that. <laughs> That's even yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Boom. Okay, I guess we're doing I Speak Jesus this week. <laughs> Sometimes the axe falls between yeah. two songs, and, how then, we, oh. and then you just do a combo. That's yeah. how we pick worship leaders as well for the weekend. Yeah, with the axes. The one that gets hit with the axe. <laughs> the one that gets hit or doesn't get doesn't hit. Get hit. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. the one that doesn't yeah. get hit. But, I mean, what's funny is everybody has their system and their style, and, you know, you guys, does it, does it because you've got the same people, the platform mm -hmm. uh, your depth of knowledge of the song is pretty co pretty consistent yeah when you bring a new song in do you guys do some ever bring in new songs or you, oh, yeah. you do the same old song forever so nobody has to we, ever learn anything <laughs> yeah we we do new songs um we've de we've learned a couple new ones here recently we learned some couple couple new ones uh special for easter so um sometimes we bring out the older ones you know if we feel like uh we just need to kind of come back to a foundation so yeah we yeah. talked about in episode one some of your grounding principles one of them was was to focus on him and and you really like intimate settings and you said also do your best but 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 don't be so obs I, these are my words obsessively compulsed with with your performance that it comes in front of yeah. what, how, giving yourself to God, right. you know, because God already knows your failures and your mistakes. So if you can become comfortable in who you are and, and, and we should improve over our failures, but we don't mm -hmm. want to be obsessed by it. Right. Um, so you talked about that. I think one of the best things I heard you say in the, in the first episode is we were talking about the heart of worship for you. And you said it was to sing as an offering to him, knowing who you are in Christ and that you don't really have to compete for a seat mm -hmm. at the table with him. Yeah. He just loves you. Mm -hmm. And and to be able to relax into that and 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 your concept was that he always already has a seat. When I get saved, there's a seat at the table for me. Mm -hmm. So that means you don't have to push. Yeah. You can just be you. And for somebody at your age, 23 years of age, to be already there, you're going to just have a stellar future as you lead people in Christ. Yeah. And that comes across in, in the work. We're not going to play this time, but but you can also find Hannah at Cedar Sessions on YouTube. She's got an incredible song called Keep Me. And it, we played that in, in the previous episode. Go check the long play of that. It features her. Then Ben comes in um, with a song called Nothing Else. And they put that together in an incredible thing. So watch out for the Cedar Sessions. Uh, the ones that we're promoting up here are past, but there'll be others coming. And uh, go go check go check that out. Just incredible stuff you're doing. Um, people can get to know you. And, and we're, we're going to do one of your songs at the end of this episode. That same one, but it's going to be a, kind of a solo version of it. And uh, keep me... And it's just amazing. When, when I think of, this is my question as we transition here. When I think of worship, I, 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 I feel like a lot of times we design the rooms all wrong. We, we put the worship team up up here and we put a guitar player up here and the song leader up here and we have a microphone and we look at this crowd that looks like they're sitting in seats that would be ticketed. They come in, they, they got a program and they yeah. sit down like they're going to watch a dance recital because mm -hmm. right, you work in dance mm -hmm. or they're going to watch a program or they bought, they, 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 they're, they're going to pay a tithe. Maybe it's a free will offering, but in some ways in their mind, they've paid a ticket price and now they need you to entertain them for the next hour and a half, two hours. And if you're really boring, you're going to see they're all on their phones and they, they're either maybe 
taking pictures and going, we love this thing and wish you were here, or they're going, man, this is a bomber and we give you a two star, you know? So, so it, everything feels like when you look at it, when you look at the church today, it looks like we're worshiping, we're leading the people in, a, in, in an event. But I think for me spiritually, I see it as whether we're pastor here, which I am here, or whether Ben's a worship leader here, or your worship leader, I see us not as leading them, but I see us as standing all as one before God. And, and, and the people in the pews, they're not the concert attendees. I see them as the followers of ours as we lead together before a throne of one person in the audience, yeah. and that's Jesus. Unfortunately, our, our congregations in general aren't built to look at one seat being Jesus's. You know, they, they feels like an us versus them or, 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 or by vocation show. That's how I see it. Um, how do you, how do you visualize your role in leading, uh, the people before the throne of God? Yeah. So, um, I just try to remind myself that we're not here to do a show. And I think that's, that's one thing that I've loved about is kind of getting out of a formula mentality at our church when it comes to picking out the songs, because it's not going to be the same every week. Um, you know, God, he's always doing new things. He's always doing different things. He's the same, but he's always doing new things. And so, um, I think I just, we just try to approach it as remembering that we're not here to put on a show. Um, we're not here to perform. We're not here to, uh, it's like, we're not here for the people, but we're here to help them yeah. see Jesus. How would you yeah. see the role yeah. of the platform team in enhancing that? I mean, yeah, that's. How, how, how do you see your role to, to keep people orientated that way? Because it's easy to get the other way because it feels the other way. Right, yeah. I I think it just all comes down to, like I said earlier, just being confident in who you are in Jesus and knowing that he's not seeing it as a show either, obviously. He's, he's, he's the audience that we need to be looking Absolutely. towards. He's the audience that we need to look to please and to um, give this offering to. And then so when it comes to the congregation, you know, sometimes like some of us will even just say it, you know, just focus on Jesus right now, you know, lift your hands, close your, you know, don't, don't look at us. We're not here to entertain you. We're here to glorify God, to minister to his heart and, um, give him an offering that's worthy of who he is. Yeah. And we, we talked about this earlier in, in between, and I'm gonna throw it in now cause I think it's a good time to do it. Uh, I, I was, I've been a pastor for almost 35 years now. I've been doing contemporary style worship probably for the last 20 of that, 22 of that. I mean, planning churches and stuff like that. Maybe maybe more than that now. Wow, it's a while. Okay, so I, so it's longer than that. But in my in my first years, I was a Methodist pastor and I did some of that planning and moved to the contemporary in that. But but for, for those early years of my ministry, I had your classic, you know, worship team which was more of a choir with a worship with a with a choir leader and you would show up to church and I would have my message and, and they didn't really care what my song what my message was they were just going to do three hymns and a special and 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 they were basically just punching in go to hymn 272 they'd sing it and they'd move to the next one move to the next one maybe do their featured piece and, and you know if I forgot to make proper room for that I'd be in trouble you know but but I never thought about my worship leader in those days as somebody leading us to the throne. I thought of them as just kind of putting in a routine, mm -hmm. kind of like a gymnast does. They got a routine yeah, they got to do. Right. And I never thought about, I never heard a worship pastor in those days talk about the heart of worship or leading people to the throne of God. Yeah. And I began to see a shift in that when I started the Highland Church. And I, I began to see us, we, we had both a choir there and a worship praise band. And you began to see that kind of change. And then by the time we got to uh, starting other churches in Pawnee and Waterloo and, 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 and uh, I, I saw a complete different change, flip over. And all of a sudden the worship leader is working parallel with the pastor as a Levitical priest, to kind of leading people before the throne of God. Yeah. And all of a sudden it matters about where that, the, the worship leader is no longer just somebody leading a choir of voices that are punching it in. They're, they're leading a course of people before God. And all of a sudden it, it kind of, I could see that the heart of the worship leader was more evident there. And what they did with that 
would determine which way that church would go, whether it became a performance-based church or they I, they would just take the attitude of, I'm now leading a concert, yeah. or I'm going to lead people to the throne of God. And you could see the depth and the shallowness very easy. I don't know if you guys have lived long enough yet to see that, but to me, it's, I mean, when I see Ben today lead worship at Community Faith Church, I see somebody that's just having a personal love relationship with God yeah. and letting us all sing along with him. Absolutely. It's very, I mean, it's, I mean, Ben's one of the most compulsive worship leaders I've ever had to, to want to worship with because I just want to connect with him and the way he's connecting with God. Mm -hmm. He puts me, even if I'm not in the right frame of mind, after I've been worshiping a few minutes with Ben, I'm standing before the throne. And maybe I'm doing it intercessorily with him initially, but before long, I'm walking out there by myself. To me, that's an mm -hmm. incredible gift. Yeah. And that was something I never thought about for years and years and years in the mainline church. You know, your role at the whole team's role at turning everybody around, getting them up out of their seats and saying, it's not about you, but it's, it, it's about sacrificing to him. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, 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 that that's a, I, we've got this, I got this chart. Let me show this chart. It's complex, right? Do you do, do you do math? Are you uh, good at math? Bit, yes. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> this is a, in, 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 um, in trigonometry, they have sine and cosine waves. And for me, like if you take the blue wave, the cosine, that would say be the say that's the say that's the uh, let me give an example here. That's the worship wave, okay. And then the blue wave, the sine would be the preaching wave. I, I think when worship and pastoral worship and 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 teaching worship are going together, they, there's a flow that connects. And there'll be movements in a service where it, you know, the song connects with the teaching or the teaching connects with the song. And there'll be moments in the church where it just, you can feel the electrostatic presence of the Holy Spirit yeah. there. And, you know, and that's where God moves, whether it's being healing and deliverance, great ministry moments happen. And, and people wait for those moments. And sometimes they happen in the song, sometimes they happen in the preaching, sometimes they happen in the invitation, sometimes, but I've, I found rarely do they happen twice. Mm -hmm. So when God, when God stirs the pools of Shalom in a service, it's a moment. You gotta, you gotta grab that moment yeah. and mine that out. And maybe you had three other songs planned, but you see God moving and now you're extending that song and you're maybe saying, Hey, let's get the pastor and ministry here. Now up here, people, people are hooked. Let's go. And then I've seen times when I've seen that happen and somebody says, well, I got six more songs to do. So they do the six more songs thinking that they'll bring the wave back. The wave yeah, won't come back. come back. It doesn't yeah. come back. I hate to say that. I've never seen it come back a second time in yeah. service. I, maybe it does someplace, but I've never seen it myself. But I love it when they flow together and they don't, I don't think they have to be intentional. I just think they both have to be sensitive yeah. to what God's doing. And so I, I think it's a beautiful thing when, when the worship and the preaching are, are working to ride a wave and they're working in tandem and parallel. I think there's incredible momentum and incredible synergy there. And, and that's what I see a lot of today. I didn't see any of that 25, 30 years ago. And now I see the most effective churches have that flow. And when they can come into harmony, you can do amazing things. What's, what's your thought process on, 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 on making things flow together? Yeah, I think hustle? that's, it just all comes down to really listening for when you need to pause, when it's time to move on. That's another thing we've been trying to focus on at our church more with the worship is not, and our pastor tells us this too, like don't rush from song to song. Yeah. Don't 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 sing a song just to sing it mm -hmm. and also don't rush like if there's a moment where god's wanting us to just sit and you know for him to do his work we just need to pause and wait for and there i've honestly there's been times where we've literally just done one song that's because right. you know we there we just didn't he didn't want us to move he wanted us to stay there right. in that moment and we stay on that song for who knows how long and he does, he's able to do incredible things. But I think it's just, you know, not putting him in a box and thinking that, okay, we're going to, we're going to give God space to move on this song or in this space, like mm -hmm. telling him where he can move instead of he's the one who's leading it. He's the one who knows what the people and I, need. I, I think like yeah. a sine and cosine wave yeah. is like an ocean wave. Right. You know, if you can get that flow of that, then, and the, and that the pastor can find that with his worship team, you can know where to surf and not yes, to surf. Absolutely. You can get on the board and you can ride with the Holy Spirit yeah. or you can miss the wave and you can crash in the, right between that side and coast side. Those th there, there's, there's kind of a, a, a no go zone. If you drop down between those two peaks and that upper right hand one, like between the side and coast side, there's, there's a valley there. If you drop down that valley, it can be devastating. 
But if you can get up on top of one of those waves, you can really move. And to do that, you've got to have a preacher, a, a pastor, you have a worship leader that are being sensitive to that. And you know, there's a lot of times I'll adjust my message. Or I'll, like this week I was preaching, I cut my message in half this week because I decided to focus in on something else that I hadn't necessarily planned in my notes. And I just, I just knew I wasn't going to get there. The Lord spoke to me something that morning. I knew I was going to end up trapped here. I even told the guy in the back, I said, I'll probably only get halfway through because the Lord spoke to me in the shower, you know? And so when the worship hit that, you know, you could do that. But there's a lot of people that are more obsessively compulsive to getting it done. Right. And you kind of punch past that thinking, you know, God's going to be in what I do later, which is kind of not sacrificing. It's kind of no. like, to me, it's almost like God's going to be in what I'm doing. It's kind of like you become the star. Right. Do you, it makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. And so the performance takes over. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing we got to be, be fearful of in, in the church is that we become performers and we're not Levitical worship leaders. Yeah. Worship leaders mean we're leading people to the throne of God. And I think it's key. What, when, when you, I, I know you got to kind of a fairly static platform, but what do you do? What do you guys do to help develop your maturity, to bring along maybe new people on the platform, to help spiritually develop other people? Uh, do you guys got any kind of plan? Do you work together? Do you mentor? Do you, do you, do you, your family's so talented? Can somebody come up and do you, do you have beginners sometimes that are working with you guys? How do you do that? Um, yeah, every now and then. Um, right now we have kind of the same group of people um but i think that's there's a gift in that too because we've all been playing with each other for so long so it's really cool because we some of us can kind of know where someone's gonna go um or like how it's gonna you know how it may flow in the service but yeah we just we just learn to trust each other mm -hmm. trust trust that all of us can hear the same the same holy spirit and that we'll just like you said we'll all just surf kind of surf the wave together um but yeah we just it just comes down to trust trusting your team trusting the people that you're playing with um trusting them to back you trusting them to um just hear that hear that uh hear that same voice that's leading that's leading everyone yeah i think that's great i i, I think as a worship leader <clears throat> you're not only leading me in the music proper, but I think there's also a role to develop, not just your staff, like you're talking mm -hmm. about your team around yeah. you. But I also think there's an incumbent role, uh, like Lucas here develops, works with the whole teams on both audio visual side and, and then music, Ben's leading the worship platform. I, there's one goal to bring along new musicians and bring along new tech people and that. There's another role to develop your, your worship congregation because if you really think about what I said earlier, the congregation's part of your platform. Mm -hmm. And really God's the one in the seat. So you have a role also, I, maybe it's intentional or unintentional, but I do think we have a role to bring the congregation along to develop them in worship because you've got people coming in that are coming out of mainline, they're coming out of Catholicism, Lutheranism, uh, they're coming out of this church that sang hymns and they've never sang contemporary worship, they've never done a, a, a cedar session, mm -hmm. they, they don't, they've never had this intimate side or, or maybe they're just never been in church and this yeah. is their first experience. You're gonna have all, then you're gonna have somebody that's never missed church. You're gonna have a lot of level of people. And so as you serve up that, what are what are two or three things that you could offer as a worship leader to help the person in the pew enhance their worship experience? If you were telling people to get ready to come to worship, getting ready to come and be a part of the congregation, what are those one or two or three things that you could help them to really be a better worshiper amidst the congregation? Yeah, just, um, just getting to know Jesus. Um getting to just talking to him like we're talking you know um i think i think it's important we actually it's funny we actually had someone in our church this past sunday who never ever ever has been in church her whole life first time yeah first time in church um one of the kind of the mothers of our church brought her and um i remember i was kind of watching her because you know i was okay i was like i don't know if like shit you know she's probably like what are they doing like what's what's going on but i noticed like once we started singing the, the music and even the song we did that day i speak jesus it like it just that's ju that's just a song that just totally captures who jesus is it's a so it's a powerful yeah song. and so the fact that this this i don't even know if she, you know she may not even she may have never even heard of jesus either if she'd never been in church and so right yeah I feel like that was an opportunity where we were able to display to her who Jesus is and she ended up getting saved at the end of service. Wow. And so, yeah, I just think, you know, the gospel is really simple. I think we complicate it a lot. Yeah. And so I just think it's important to, to 
deliver the gospel message in your in your service in the worship simply with you know no strings attached no extra fluff none of the extra stuff that's unnecessary and when people see the beauty of the gospel and how simple it is and this this man that came gave up heaven gave up his throne gave up all of that to come and save us and so that we could be his family again people are like that's mind blowing you know people are going to want to follow someone who gave up their life for him when they see, when they yeah. see like the beauty of what he did but, but but don't you think also i think as you as you talk to people about jesus and you show them the simplicity mm-hmm. as we're leading worship some of the stuff we can tell people you know feel free to lift your hands mm-hmm. feel free to express yourself find yourself in god but i think some of that has to be demonstrated by those yeah that are the leaders of the platform are just the worship leaders with the rest of the congregation yeah. being a part of the worship team yeah i, I think how the platform expresses itself also opens the doors to inviting other people to find their own expression. Yeah, absolutely. Although you see some churches, they're pretty cloned. You know, what one person does, it's like, put your left foot in, put your right foot out. Everybody's (laughs) doing the exact same thing. Right. Our church is a little bit interesting here because you might have 12 different things, 20 different things happening. I mean, Ben's worshiping and we might have people walking, sitting, Mm -hmm. hands raising, prayer walking in the back. I mean, in the old days, everybody stood up, they sang the three hymns, verses, and they set their butts back down. Right. And if you stood up or you rose your hand at the wrong time, some churches just gave you escort out. Yeah. You know, you clapped. We don't clap. We clap for like the Christmas cantata. <laughs> yeah, I like the way the it's it's um, the worship has kind of moved, at least in our this area, it's kind of moved into encouraging people to do what works for them. You know, instead of expecting everyone to be standing up for all the yeah. entire worship, mm-hmm. do what's working for you. You know, focus on Jesus. Yeah. And whatever helps you to do that best, do that. You yeah. know, if you need to lay on the ground, do that. Mm-hmm. If you God, we have people sit, lay out. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just do, whatever do you see a freedom of expression? Do you guys see that? At, oh, yeah. 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 People lift their hands, they jump, they dance, mm-hmm. they go on their knees. And you can yeah. see when the people come in that haven't been in a church since they were at the first Baptist church downtown, you know, and they and they go like, what is happening here? You know, you know, they're moving. You can mm-hmm. move when you worship. Yeah. You know, if that's you, what God puts in your heart. Yeah. You, you can walk. If absolutely. you walk, I, I like to prayer walk. I, I prayer walk before I preach until I, I hear a certain kind of, I call it, holy calibration mm-hmm. as I pray, pray and I talk to God, I kind of work through who's here and who's there and God, do I have the right message from you today? Did I need to change something? Am I in the way? And by the way, I was grouchy this morning to my wife, so I need to get past that. And, and, you know, I, I, I prayer walk till I can just hear God Yeah. and, and, or I hear something in the music that, that, that Ben hooks me on. Sometimes I'll run up and, and say, and jump in for a second and, and say, Hey, God's speaking to me right now. I, I prayer walk till what I brought from my study fits what the room I'm in. And so that means I may have to change. I may have to get out of the way. Or all of a sudden, what I st- there's a lot of times what I've written, I had, I, I'll tell Beth, well, the message is going to be garbage tomorrow. Yeah, I would not even come. I'd bring your phone, do something, play Candy Crush. <laughs> and then she'll, she'll tell me nowadays, well, that's going to be good. You know, and, and I'll be, nah, it was terrible because I didn't plan for it to be good. I mm-hmm. did my best, but it's not good. And then I get over here and I start prayer walking or you do a song band or somebody does something and all of a sudden I get why God had me there yesterday and all of a sudden there's like a fire lit yeah. under what I was going to do and it makes sense. Or he gives me the other piece and it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you find that in worship leading as well? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like a lot of times when I don't feel ready, that's when I'm ready. <laughs> I know. It's just terrible. <laughs> it's like, you know, like there's been times where you know, people have me come play, you know, play some songs for an event or um, sometimes I go, there's a church here I go to, uh, to minister to their youth every now and then. And there's a lot of times where I feel like I'm like, you know, 10 minutes before I have to leave. I'm like, God, you, I still don't have anything. Like, what am I supposed to talk about? What am I supposed to sing? And I think that's when he's wanting me to trust him and trust his leading and that, you know, really, uh, you know, it says in the Bible to be ready in and in and out of season. And so, Mm -hmm. um, if we think about it, if we're always connected to Jesus, if we're always listening for his, you know, for his, uh, for his leading and listening to the spirit, we're always going to be ready. Um, and you know, cause he's, he's already in us and he's guiding us and leading us. And so as long as we're in tune with that, um, we're, we're set, we're ready for what he, what he wants to do. 
in a room. That's really good. I, I, I hate I hate to say this, but when when I when I feel really good about a sermon the night before, I usually bung, it, I crash it. <laughs> I, I do. I mean, if, 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 if I, I mean, I don't mean okay. I, I always feel good that I've done the preparation. Mm-hmm. You know, like Sunday, I knew I'd done the preparation, and I was ready to talk about Psalm. We were doing Psalm 15. And I was ready to talk about Psalm 15, but I walked in and told my wife, I said, I've done the work, I know the Psalm, I know what it's about. I just have, n- there's there's no ignition point for me right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm ready, competent to preach, but I'm not excited about anything I'm gonna talk about. And by the time I got done with my shower the next morning, I could barely hold myself to get to church because I was so ready to talk about what God had I'd prepared. So I had done the work and God said, thank you for doing the work here. I'm going to show you how to put the icing on this cake. Yeah. And I was pumped by the time right. I got here. Now there's other times, this is sick. This is bad. Where I have been so fired up back in my Methodist days when I was, you know, good classic Methodist preacher and you had your, I call them CEM, uh, uh, member, your, your CEM triune visit members days. That's Christmas, Easter and mother's day. So you had your members of the triune visitation where they come three times a year. So you knew that, you know, your regular tents was what, 150, but on Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day is going to swell to 320. And you thought, I'm going to give them the message that they've never heard. It's going to be God's going to be in it. And they're going to come back and not miss the next Sunday. And so I would spend sometimes weeks crafting each word and almost get so verbatim I would have it polished with graphics and examples. And I'd get up there and fire that. I'd be so ready to deliver that speech. I, I it, You hear me say speech, mm-hmm. right? Right, yeah. not mm-hmm. message right. from God. So right. I'd get up there and I, I'd fire that thing off and it would just be a dud. I could feel it being a dud there. I was sick of it. I wasn't inspired by it. I, I was captivated by what I'd done, mm-hmm. but what I did did not pleasure me, let alone God, I don't yeah. think. And then you leave the service and look at Beth and go, how'd it go? She said, terrible. <laughs> and then of course, none of them come back the next week and you're back to the whole 150, you know? So I, I quit doing that about 15 years ago. And so I rarely preach on, I, I made Easter fit into Micah but I had to work hard to get there this year. So people showed up, I was in Micah chapter, part seven of a series, and I just happened to mention the hope of, of a Messiah. And so I was able to get Jesus in yeah. there, but I quit planning preaching around the calendar and for people. Mm-hmm. And I began to just preach the word of God and teach study, teach the Bible in a way that people will be inspired. And f- frankly, honest with you, churches that bend over every way to get a CEM member to come back the next week, they're just not gonna come back next yeah. week. They're, and if they are, it's not for the right reason. Right. So is, is there some parallels in worship where you just try to find, uh, you just find try to find your voice with God for that moment? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, like I said before, you know, it's important to not um, put on this like different, like not, not being uh, authentic in worship. Cause people can, we've talked about this already too. People can sniff that out real fast. Yeah, they can sniff it out. And so it's like, if they come and they see that you're not, like authentic in your expression or um, it's coming across as, you know, fake. And if like, you know, say someone like intentionally, like really wants to see God move in a service and they come and you're just putting on a show, they're not going to come back. Cause they're like, there's, cause you've not, not progr- you, you've programmed it all programmed, yourself and yeah. there's nothing, there's no place for him. Right. You're right. like, yeah. you're, you're like, uh, like when it comes to like, you know, doing a sermon, it's like you're giving your words and not God's words. And, and I would, I, I'm not picking on any church, but I would say that, that you're talking about half, uh, about half the worship in, that we would have around us would be more than geared to be programmatic yeah. versus intimate, like you're talking mm-hmm. about. Because intimate's risky. It is. And you walk up there not knowing. <laughs> messy. Where you, it's me- it can it's be messy. messy. <laughs> people can get messy. Yeah. Uh, what comes out of people can get messy. Mm-hmm. It, it's unpredictable. Your security team doesn't know what to do. Your, your prayer team doesn't know what to do. You don't know what to do. What are you going to do if you get stuck in a song and, and God starts really delivering people of some sins and and, and 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 people are really being changed? You know, I've seen, I've been in churches and I've been in situations where God would start to move. And, and when I was an associate, the pastor would change gears because he said, that's enough of that. You know, like it was enough that everybody knew they went to church. But if we go farther than that, we're going to be carried away with the spirit. And we don't do that here. So it was like, That's mani- scary, man. yeah, it's like almost Paris. It's like managed, <laughs> right. like man, like we got a little scratch and sniff of Jesus. Yeah, close the box, close the box. Right. Yeah, cool. Cause if yeah. he gets out of that box, we could have revival here. Right. 
I was told once by a bishop of our church, I was leading a, yeah, whoa, I was leading ev evangelism efforts for our, our whole entire denomination with the pastors and leaders. And we were having events where people were falling out in the spirit. God was really moving. There were pastors just crying their eyes out and, and recommitting themselves to the heart of worship. And that thing was on fire, on fire. I'd done it in multiple places, hundreds of pastors being changed. And I got called in by my bishop and told, what you're doing is incredible. It takes me back to when I was a kid in church. You know, back in those days, you know, he says, you're doing a great job. But, and I, he says, but you need to, could you just turn the flame down a little bit? Yeah. That was what he said to me. I said, what do you mean? I said, I thought the cross in the flame was our logo for John Wesley and the, that our flame. He says, well, your flame's a little too blue. You know, you need to bring it down red. And you know about red. Red's not blue's the Ooh. hottest flame. Yellow's right. blue's the yeah. hottest. You need to bring it down a little bit because uh, we won't be able other, because I was doing this at a conference level. He said, other pastors can't reproduce what you're doing and people will be disappointed in them. So we need to keep the bar low so people are getting a common experience. Yeah. Wow. And I said, what if we just set everybody on fire and everybody would come up? Mm -hmm. He says, that's not possible. And I said, well, nothing's not possible. So, but I literally, got, that's the first time ever in my, that's why I ended up leaving the Methodist church. I, 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 I was always allowed to do what I need to do. I was put in charge of evangelism of the conference. God was moving in it. And when the bishop pulled me in, and then here's, let me tell you why it happened. Because the previous place we'd been, we had, we were at Shane Bishop's church. Mm -hmm. We had the altars loaded with pastors crying out to God, asking wow. to be rekindled on fire. I mean, loaded over, laying over each other. I'm talking about a thousand people. Yeah. And we just preached the brains out. All right, there was on fire. There were so many people at the altar that it was, there were like a hundred people. Shane and I just went from, we, the teams were going from one side to the other. And and I looked at some of the cabinet members of the Methodist cabinet that were there because they had heard the event was going well and they'd showed up for that event. And I looked down at a couple of the superintendents that worked for the bishop and I said, can you guys help us? We had so many people to pray with and minister to, we just needed help. I don't know what possessed me to ask them because that's not where they come from. These guys are, are, are high level Pharisees at this time. And I understand that today. I understand. I didn't then I was just in the moment and, and God was on fire and these are their pastoral. Uh, these are pastors of pastors. Yeah. So I'm like, could y'all just help me? They never moved. Wow. They did. Some of them were caught on fire. And, and, and I, I think what happened when I asked them to help, I embarrassed them. And so when I got called in the next day, I, I only lived nine miles from my bishop's office. And I got a call and says, can you be, come to the office? I said, well, can I put you on schedule? I said, no, you're only 10 miles away. We'll see you in 10 minutes. I mean, that, I had a big conference. I drove there just to be told I need to turn the fire down on the next event coming up. And they were going to put a couple seminary professors in with me to help die down the topics and bring a liberal perspective to it. And that was kind of the end of it. But yeah. never, in, I never, that day I was broken hearted because we, in, here's how the conversation started, Hannah. I've never, I, I haven't seen anything like this since I was a child going to camp meetings at, at, at holiness camp. This is incredible, but, and so I think a lot of times we can quench the spirit ourselves. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think whether you're a worship leader, you can do it with your performance mentality. If you have that, a pastor can do it because they get intimidated by the worship leader or they want to get control back or it's getting too out of hand. Or I, I just think. I think that's still at stake today. I see less of it happening. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. no, I was going to say, well, it's, it's like mm, sometimes the Lord wants to prune us of some things mm -hmm. and it's painful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess it's a choice for us if we want to allow him to do that or if we want to resist it and say, no, turn the flame down. Yeah, when your bishop tells you that you're done kind of, because yeah. then if you don't do it, you're not submitting to authority. And so that we knew that was the end of us mm, in yeah. the church because I, I, the pulpit in the Methodist church is yours. And that was the first time I'd ever been told to, to tamper something that I've been, now I was the chair of the committee, so I was in charge of the event. So it was like I was being told I couldn't be me. I couldn't mm -hmm. just be me. Yeah. And when, it, when that happened, something broke in me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even if I got calibrated, I couldn't get it out. And not just you couldn't be you, but you couldn't allow God to be God right. yeah. through you. Through yeah. you. Yeah. Do, do you feel yeah. like you have that freedom in your worship position to be you? Yeah, and I'm grateful because I know that that is not the case everywhere. It, it is not the yeah. case everywhere. And it's like, you know, the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Right. And so... I mean, if there's there's, a, there's yeah. extremely contemporary... I think Lucas has a... Lucas travels. He, he knows professional worship all over the country. I think Lucas, if he had a mic on, he could tell you that, that there are a lot of churches doing, the, I, there'd be a lot of churches that do, I speak Jesus next Sunday. Mm -hmm. 
There'll be a lot of churches that do the song and there'll be some that will tear that song up and get to the heart of it and right. really speak Jesus. Yes. There'll yeah. be some churches that'll be, you, you can be confused because it looks like two contemporary churches, mm -hmm. but they'll have two different, would you agree with that, Lucas? Yeah. I mean, so it's not just a thing of the old church right. doing hymns and the new church. Right. You can see the, the surface level of fraud. Absolutely. Let me say this in modern day worship. Would you agree, Ben? Yep. Absolutely. Every time. Absolutely. Do, do you feel, I mean, do you feel like you have freedom here? I, I, I mean, you don't have seen the problem, have any problem tearing up and taking my time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, me. I think we, we got some things we need to discuss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I always have appreciated that here because I feel like you've just sort of, you just kind of let me do. Every, every now and then I throw an old song at him saying, yeah. you know, this old song, can you do this? But I mean, it's not a lot of that, but, yeah. but, but, but there's a mutual, like, like we're both, we, I think we recognize why we're here and, you know, our own agendas can't come before Get, getting the message God of yeah. God yeah. out. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you feel like you have freedom that yeah. day. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you kind of, this would be a wrap up question for this session, but, um, what is your heart for getting people to understand the power worship and the, and, and in me, when I mean the power worship, meaning that they're not a spectator, but they're mm -hmm. a part of the worshiping congregation. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything, do, how do you engage people? How do you communicate that? How do you get somebody to flip the switch from being a pew setter to a part of your worship team? Yeah, so I just think it comes down to, um, like, you know, my journey with kind of learning what the heart of worship is for me, like I said earlier, just coming down to knowing who I am in Christ and that you don't have to, you don't have to have a platform to, um, to display that, you know, um, like, you know, we we're all in this together. The congregation is a part of that ministering to God. And so, um, I think it's just reminding everyone, you know, we're, we're, we're here to help you. We're here to help you discover who God is. We're here to help you hear God. Um, and it's just about taking off that pressure of um, it has to be a certain way. It has to come out a certain way. Um, and just knowing that the Holy Spirit's going to do his work. It's, it's our job to partner with him for him to move through us and deliver that message. Um, and I just, yeah, just taking off that pressure of, we're performing for you. Like, no, you're a part of this with us. How, how do you, last question. <clears throat> how do you um, partner with your pastor? How do you flow with your pastor in, in creating those experiences? I mean, do you guys just throw it up to worship and then drop off the edge of the cliff and he's on and, and then he goes, in? or do you guys, <clears throat> I mean, if, if you feel the leading and ex extend a song mm -hmm. or ministry takes off, is he is he quick to yield? Is he going to want to cut all of your throats after service, or and vice versa? If if your pastor's got a special word and he's up, it, how does that flow in your church so it creates a good continuity of of, of the sine and cosine flow? Yeah. So yeah, we do we do work really well with our pastors as to you know how the service is going to flow, and there are times where we'll be playing a song. And in the middle of the song, you know, someone may have a word. They usually go to our pastors to, you know, share with them what the word is mm -hmm. to make sure it's in order and, you know, that it follows everything. But, um, you know, someone will give a word. We'll go back up and worship, kind of uh, taking hold of what, you know, mm -hmm. the Lord said. Sometimes our pastor will come and say, I feel like this is a time of ministry. If you like, you know, maybe there's a there's a moment for healing to take place or deliverance or so, you know, we 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 try to. Um, make sure that we pay attention so that some, we don't some, miss that. Are y'all able to do some spontaneous development yes. sections yeah. like that? That's the one yeah. thing good about having a tight group like mm -hmm. you do is then you, you guys know each other well enough that you can. Yeah. And I think absolutely. Ben and them are able to do that very well here when yeah. we do it. I threw, I threw Ben, and I think that's what's beautiful about it. I threw Ben, Wednesday night, we, we do Bible study on Wednesday night here at 6.30, and we're teaching, been doing Matthew for over a year. We'll probably be a year and a half in Matthew. I, we're at Matthew 14 this week, and, you know, there's 28 in Matthew, so – we're only halfway through Matthew, which is funny, but we, but we've had some great classes. I mean, and so we're here to, t to learn the Bible, yeah. but then Ben was on platform with, uh, Brooke, Brooke Dean, uh, co, co, co leading with her this week. And I, they sang a song together that was the best mix of the two of them I'd ever heard. And you could just feel the presence of God mm -hmm. come in the room. And I, I just, just love the song. Yeah. And so we, we played the, I have a lead in that we play 
I, I just want while the lead was gone, I said, guys, I, I really just want you to do that song again. I, I really don't care if I'm on next or not. I think people need to hear that again. If they didn't hear, it, they need to enjoy it again. And and when we got off the break, I just told people, I said, I put my light on my phone. I said, we want to hear that again. And so they kind of lined back up and went at it again. And it was the whole crowd. It, it just ignited the room. And, and it was Wednesday nights. You don't, you're not expecting. I mean, it's like, I guess we're going to come. We're going to hear a song. We're going to get a little teaching. Yeah. We had church. That's awesome. It, I mean, yeah. I talked to people afterwards. It was so. I, I think so many. If you if you just have this in mind, you're not really going to flow together. You can really miss some incredible mm -hmm. movements of God. Yeah. And I, I, the best worship song I've heard. I mean, I hear good worship every week, but but that was just so anointed, and it was just a moment. And uh, I think it's cool to have the freedom to do that. Yeah. And I appreciate Ben. I, I appreciate worship leaders that are open to working with their pastor that way mm -hmm. because there are some that just get mad at you. Gosh. Yeah. Uh, like it's not your yeah. show either so no i could throw there's people i've come up on and say can we do that verse again they look at me like i don't know how to get back in that why mm. did you ask me that i've had that in my back days here and i've had it in other places you know and, you know because it's highly programmed mm. and I, I did that I, I was i was at a church i won't name the church because the guy's a friend of mine uh i was at church and and i just loved what they did i was coming up as the, i was the they brought me in to preach and i loved that and i said i came up in like i do here i said can you kick us back in that again at the bridge and they looked at me like, uh-uh. I said, what do you mean can't kick it back into the bridge? You just sang it. Well, that's not the way our tracks and our lighting and all that stuff work. So they're telling me that like in my ear. You can't do that. I, I haven't been invited back there. Oh, no. Yeah, because they can't, their music doesn't work. There's no flexibility in their right. music. Yeah. Do you guys see that at all today? I mean, I, I mean, mean, it exists. This is a big church that's doing this. It doesn't exist here. Yeah. No. Yeah. And that doesn't mean we don't plan and prepare things and don't have the right stuff going yeah. on. Yeah. But at the same time, if, if the Holy Spirit shows up, are you guys able to make adjustments like that? Or, or would oh, you, would you yeah. get, we, like, I got fired just, as the preacher. They don't let me preach anymore. I feel like, like you can have structure. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with having structure, but if it's so Gosh. like rigid. box, yeah, yeah, rigid where there's no room, it's like, where? So Ben says, anytime you want to come up, I'll right. sing it again. And I'm thinking, I'm scared. Last time I did that, I got thrown out. <laughs> I feel like, like <laughs> when you do that and you're just so locked into your program that you've planned and that you're so proud of or your sermon that you wrote and you spent all this time on and you do it and you execute it, sometimes God looks back and he's just like, Hey, that was a really uh, nice, on, boy. nice thing that, that you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. Right. And that's, yeah. going, that's going to what you're saying. Where was did, I? When you said, right. focus, Where was on, I? Yeah. focus on him, be intimate yeah. with him, and do my best, but don't be obsessively compulsive. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that runs a lot of good churches. Mm -hmm. It runs a lot of good churches, and it really prevents the Holy Spirit from getting depth. And I think we end up with a lot of shallow believers. Yeah. And I think we've created them ourselves in our own lab of, of, of ego. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest challenge. And I have seen pastors just fight with their worship leaders like almost to the death over time and space and and i make fun of ben on, on him taking my time sometimes but i am honored when he takes it and yeah. he's led by the lord it makes my work so much easier when i get up behind a wave that's already rolling right. i would rather yeah. that ra wave be just cooking and, and then get up with it nothing yeah you know what i'm saying Absolutely. i used to get up i used to get up there were i had a couple churches where I, the worship was so bad or so unanointed i'd be visiting or something that you would get up it would be flat it would be almost like, not just flat i can handle flat because i can get the wave going myself i can get happy <laughs> you know yeah. but i've i've been there where it's in decline where it's almost like you're ne in negative worship world and Oof. and then you got to try to bring that up that's impossible i have never put my surfboard in the water at community faith church with 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 this team here and not had a wave i couldn't ride yeah which is just incredible it's a great gift from god mm -hmm. and i i think what we need to do is pastors and worship leaders we need to set each other up for a great success yeah work together and work together we're and know that we're serving the one person in yeah. the pew that matters that's the lord himself we all have this we all should have the same goal in mind i anyway. think so too yeah. it's been good talking to you we're going to be back in part three here in a little bit but in the meantime victory christian fellowship uh go check out hannah's church sundays at 10 30 wednesdays at seven you can get there and find out all about what they're doing doing amazing things ben you got anything else uh beth for this episode we're nope. gonna come back in and go a little deeper nope. and um, just incredible incredible stuff here thank you so much we'll be back in episode part three of this it'll be episode our part 27 in the series featuring hannah heron she's a worship leader over at one of the worship leaders over at victory christian fellowship just incredible talking to this young 23 year old prodigy of a worship leader she has got some depth to herself so go back and listen to the first episode come back and listen to the next one after this and that's going to be an incredible incredible three-part series in our worship leaders at southern Illinois.
Super Series. Go on the doc.org, find out more about our show. Links are there to all of our, our different sites, including our Patreon site, including our different podcast platforms. You can link from there directly to those. And there's an embedded viewer as well as you can go watch all of our stuff in the past. Go watch it. And when you get there, please go check out our YouTube channel, iTunes, Spotify. Those are our featured channels. We've got those five others on the right, as well as social media presence on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and Getter. Go check those out. And when you get there, please hit subscribe, like, notify, tell others. And we'd love to have you as our partner. If you'll partner with us, we'd love to profile you. There's four levels of partnership, three levels where you can be a sponsor for the show, and we'd love to have you on that. And if you can't get over to Murfreesboro and go to church with them at 1030, we have service at 10 o'clock on Sundays, Wednesdays at 630, and you can come out to Community Faith Church. Check out more there at coftv.com. We have an embedded viewer as well and links to our different media sites. You can see those there as well. So been good to have you, Hannah, on this. And as we wrap up this episode, we've been doing this on all of the worship series. Uh, Hannah went in the studio with Lucas and Ben and they prepared a song. She's doing a solo song. You're doing Keep Me yes. in the song. Mm-hmm. And as I go off there and we get ready for uh, more fun, you're going to be hearing the amazing worship leadership of Hannah Heron as she sings Keep Me. We'll see you soon. Back for another discussion real quick here on the dock with Pastor Troy. Take care. Have a great day. No.
nothing else, no one else will do. And nothing else, no one else will do. But you, I just want you. I just want you